Hi everybody and welcome to the Adapted Physical Education program. First, we're going to show you what to do in a gym setting with individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and if you have volunteers. So first you're going to see uh, the individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities getting to know a mentor, getting to know a buddy. Uh, we typically have them answer a questionnaire in the beginning of class. And then we begin with some group games that are in a circular formation. The reason why we use a circular formation is so that the instructor who is leading this program can identify the students with and without disabilities. And he or she can make sure that everyone has a partner or somebody to work with and create groups. The first exercises we always complete are dynamic warm-ups. This allows uh, the mentors and mentees to understand you know, how the body moves, uh, how the body coordinates itself, and then also to get the heart rate up and to get ready for physical activity. So all classes are always um, started with a dynamic warm-up, and then we have different stations. So this is our fitness station. Uh, this participant is utilizing the one-arm row. Um, She's also using the rope shake. She needs to be seated for this exercise, so we always have adaptations. This is our med ball slam with a partner, throwing it down and up. Um, and then we have the exercise ball tapping. This is a modified exercise. Uh, we have dumbbell press with a bench at our fitness station. You can also do that on an exercise ball or even on the ground. Dumbbell bicep curls. Uh, these are good exercises for level one, level two learners. Uh, sun salutations, breathing exercises, and yoga. Very good for calming the body and lowering stress. Uh, so we promote that at our fitness station as well. Looking at coordination, balance, and strength, here's our one leg deadlift. Uh, one of our harder skills to learn and master. Um, here we have a sunbird, which is a postural position in yoga and it allows the uh, mentor to assess the posture uh, and the stability of the core. Here's a partner rope exercise you can perform with a buddy. Uh, this takes the stress off if you're doing it alone. We have kettlebell squats you can perform. You can use a dumbbell and, or you don't need any weight at all. Here's a modified pull-up. Typically you want the knees bent and the hips to go up as he comes up. Uh, here's our trunk lift, measuring the, the lower back up, extensibility, up, 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 up. measuring from the ground to his chin. So if he's over 12 inches, he meets, or if he's 9 to 12 inches, he meets the trunk lift requirements. So if he's under, he might have to practice some exercises to increase his lower back flexibility. Here we have our isometric push-up hold, probably our most functional way of assessing upper body strength, uh, core, muscular bend endurance, knees, the curl-up test. Typically, you want the knees bent and we don't want the back to slam down. Forearm knee plank for core. We have thick mats for support for individuals with severe or motor impairments. Uh, that gives them more stability and uh, support with a thicker mat. Let's move to our nutrition station where individuals with disabilities or individuals without disabilities can organize, there? collect food. Uh, they can create a dialogue with each other. They can talk about what they like. What's what they your, don't like. Uh, it's a good time for mentors to assess uh, the mentees' uh, diets and uh, okay. concerns, and so this is a good time for diet planning, organizing, and then also we we add a level of physicality to our nutrition station. So not only are they learning nutrition, but they're also completing exercises. So in the form of a seated uh, scooter, where they're using their hamstrings, or a prone scooter, where they're using their lower back and upper body strength. So there's many different ways you can incorporate fitness into your nutrition station. They can run laps around the circle if they don't want to use a scooter to organize the foods. And each net has a picture and it'll say healthy or unhealthy, fats, carbs, or protein. So it gives a chance to ment mentors and mentees to start collecting and organizing food. At the nutrition station, we also have a table that's set up with whiteboards, markers, uh, bingo, uh, crossword, puzzles, word searches, you could also have Pictionary. 
Um, and so the mentors and mentees get to talk to each other, they get to discuss, they get to laugh, and have a little bit of fun. Um, some of our mentees really love this exercise because it's a cool down activity, so they're not always engaging in physical skills. This is a good break or a good cool down for some individuals who um, can't endure an hour of physical activity. We offer sign language for individuals who need signing. Um, we offer modified games like bocce uh, for individuals that utilize wheelchairs, but it's actually fun also for individuals who don't utilize wheelchairs. So it's a good way to look at um, targeting, uh, manipulation, and just seeing if you can time uh, the ball out of the gutter right. And so some of our individuals really like this just because um, they like the gutter approach. So um, if you're ever playing bocce, it's, an, it's a fun game you could play on the beach requires a lot of walking and it requires a lot of patience. Uh, we have bowling available um, and so in this case she's rolling it from a push angle so that would be uh, option one. Option uh, Another option one would be for them to press the pad which pushes the ball down okay for motor impairments or for severe disabilities. Um, we also have many support staff that help out our mentees as well. Now we're going for a level three where we're looking for the walk, lunge, and roll. And that's perfect right there. So that's a, a level three learner right there being able to roll a ball. Uh, and then we go to our sports station. Or we're at our sports station, so we saw bocce, bowling. Uh, we have basketball. So we're looking at basketball dribbling skills. Uh, we're looking at um, just being able to hold on to the ball sometimes, uh, going around the legs or around the world. Uh, these are different skills that incorporate physical fitness and also ball handling skills for games like the figure eight here, which is demonstrated by one of the mentors. Um, and this is going to help develop those manipulative skills that you need to uh, possess and have control of the ball during a game. So all these activities are really important because you get a lot of different repetitions is not just shooting the ball. So some learners will do some shooting skills a little bit closer with modified nets attached to the bleachers. Uh, you can also focus on passing skills. You can also focus on targeting skills as well. So push passing, uh, chest passing into the wall here, for example. Um, and other students may use this for football targeting as well. So practicing your throwing skills. Um, notice that the mentors are always talking to the mentees and we're always trying to perfect form. So a lot of these mentors that are working with these individuals with disabilities have never worked with an individual with a disability before. So you're looking at new learners, uh, new students who may have never had this experience before. So they're doing a really good job as you can see working with other teachers um, inter collaboration between different schools this is the applied learning that occurs here at the school of health and applied human science department where we have college mentors working alongside individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities engaging in dialogue engaging in physical skills uh, teaching and learning in a very safe environment Let's go to our locomotor station where you're gonna see we have hula hoops on the ground and you know, if they wanna do a hula hoop dance, that's totally fine. Uh, at the locomotor station, we also have jump ropes. We have three person jump rope, modified jump rope where uh, you might have the individual shake the rope and they just jump over it. Um, and then you can switch out with other people. Uh, mentees really love the jump rope. They always tend to go to the jump rope as soon as they go to the locomotor station so some of the activities might get pushed back but that's okay jumping is a very very physical activity it gets the heart rate up um, if, um, you can also jump using the poly spots um, you can jump into the hula hoops you can use the step ladders as well um, we also have hurdles and we have step ladders to our right and these are good exercises for coordination, agility, and balance. As you can see here, we have a level three learner who was able to go pretty fast through these agility ladders. Some mentees might just walk over. And so here we have a fast example of what it looks like. Um, other than that, that's our locomotor station. We have fitness station, nutrition station, and sports station. Ending it here with stepping. 
Um, we have a stepper at the locomotive station, and sometimes we have assisted stepping uh, if the individual needs it. And so there's our four stations, fitness, nutrition, sports, and locomotor, and this is all done in the Hanover Gym at UNCW in North Carolina. At the end, we always end with a dance, and then we bring our hands in the middle and say, one, two, three, Seahawks, and that's how we end all of our classes. And this is a typical day of what a lab looks like here on campus. Thanks.